Peter Orietta, thanks for being with me. Thank you, Dean. Let's just start like Sure. Where where did the idea of telling stories through the, the the medium of television and film, how did how did you think that was possible for you? Well, I think my um, my father and my mother uh, certainly didn't come from show business. Uh, we grew up in Tucson, a little south from here, and um, I, I think we had a garrulous family that always told these crazy stories to each other, kind of. And um, who was the best storyteller? My in uncle your Dave. Uncle Dave. Uncle Dave. Okay, so let's go back to sure. Tucson. You grew up in Tucson. Mm -hmm. Great storytelling family. Mm -hmm. Uncle, father. Mm -hmm. um, wh what? Uh, then how does that translate into I could, I could do this for a living? Well, I went to school to be. Um, I was a creative writing major, and I still had not thought I could make a living in it. The goal when I was an undergrad was I was going to be a uh, JV baseball coach in high school, and I was going to teach um, high school English. That was the plan. Yeah, that's it's a very valid plan. And um, and the reason I chose JV baseball even in undergrad, I was like, that varsity coaching job it seems like it had a lot of stress. So I was very much a right. guy who was not didn't looking for be, stress. Didn't right? want to be in the frying pan. Right. And so in college, I fell in with this group who um, were doing sketch comedy. And the reason I fell in this group that was doing sketch comedy was because my professor, my humanities professor, uh, Dr. Donna Swain, who's still alive and retired, she graded one of my papers for existentialism and humanities. And I got this thing that said, see me in my office, no grade. Yeah, that's that. That that. That's, if you're a student, that's not what you want to see. It is that's not what you want to hear. See me, no grade. So I go into her office, and she says, "This may be the funniest paper on existentialism I've ever read." So, so Wizards of Waverly Place, mm. and that's uh, yeah, clearly a big success. Yeah, yeah. Won a couple, uh, few few trophies. Got a couple few trophies, trophies on that yeah, one. Got a couple of trophies. Nominations. Two, two Emmys. So, yep. Um, so, how did the work you did from Tucson, from Tucson end up uh, playing into this uh, story that was a broader story, but still had characters? Yeah. Uh, well, the project was originally called The Amazing O'Malley's. And there was a script Disney had, and they were looking for someone to come in and help out, run the show, perhaps do a rewrite of it to make it greenlit. And so I read it, and they were fans of Greetings from Tucson, the okay. Disney people. And so I read it and I went in and met with them and, and very specifically I said, you know, well, I'm very interested in telling the biracial story of my family and of families like it. So the first thing I'd love to do is turn this into a half Mexican family and not an Irish family. And they were cool with it. So I did that rewrite, and we made a few other adjustments. I also wanted them to be more blue collar, mm -hmm. and so we did that. And they were very helpful in that ex process and that experience. And so when we got to cast it, there were some problems because they did not have the big well of actors to draw from. and. I remembered this tape of this young girl who was probably 12, who had done a pilot for Disney that didn't go. And I asked about Selena and... So for those, Selena Gomez. Gomez for those that and I asked and they the said, they said um, oh, well, she's busy doing this other pilot. And I said, well, then why don't we have Selena be in both? Hmm. What a great opportunity to really test your proof of concept, right? You're not going to be talking about, well, we like this one pilot idea better, but we like this actress over here. And they bought it. What a, what a great opportunity for her. Right? right? She knew she was going to be on the show. So they bought it. You were, I mean, you're here in part because your own story and your commitment is aligned with our projecting all voices, the mm -hmm. idea that 
Um, you know, everybody should have an equal opportunity in this country to be able to, to, to tell their story yeah. or to tell the story they want to tell. Yeah. Um, so here we are, uh, one of the fastest growing film programs in the country. In the country, yeah. Probably in terms of the total number of students, perhaps more non-white filmmakers than any other one of the top film main programs. attractions to me. So what what do you how do you what do you want to say to them? You want to give students first of all that concept that they're walking around with a film studio in their pocket. They have they have the tools. And then you want to give them the expertise by putting them in places like this with faculty that's going to tell them this can be yours. And finally, to your question about the business, you know, the one thing I've learned in all my years, 20 some years in Hollywood is, the business loves money. And now that you've got people dedicated to teaching those new voices, lifting up those new voices, it, it really is just a matter of time. And by having ASU have the faculty that it has, people that are very knowledgeable about what's happening right now with FilmSpark, yep. with the Herald Examiner building um, in LA, um, those opportunities are going to be coming at these students so fast. And they need to be ready for it, right? Because one of the things that happens is you get a moment of opportunity, and if you haven't done the work, it's going to pass you by. I'd like to conclude. Sure, sure. You've already answered parts of this question, but um, uh, how, when you look back, how do you want to say you used your creativity to change the world? I think I've been, I, I didn't have a mission when I started. I just wanted to write and make people laugh. And I guess that's a mission. But I was at a, conference called Amplify in Ojai and I met a woman who makes educational software and she said tell me who you are and I said I'm Peter Marietta and I'm a TV writer and producer and she said no you're not I looked you up and she said you're somebody who has spent 20 years putting people of color in front of them behind the camera and that's the first line of your bio and it should always be the first line of your bio because I looked you up. And she galvanized me. I mean, she made me feel like, oh, yeah. And it felt firm to me, like that wasn't some pamphlet or some statement that I just read. That was my life's work. And so I'm excited to be continuing that, and continuing it here, and continuing it in LA. And, you know, I just think that that's me. Well, this can't be a better place for that mission to live itself out. Um, there are you will touch thousands and thousands of students. And they will make their way in the world and tell their stories, tell their family stories, and make our uh, uh, culture richer and stronger. So, uh, Peter, thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you, you for talking. Yes. We could have walked another half mile, I know. but here we are. All right. At the end of our journey. All right. Thanks. See you soon. Okay.